Today, I'm going to demonstrate a Power Automate action which uses AI to automatically describe your images. This action is available via the Cloudmersive Image Processing Connector in Power Automate, which we've demonstrated other iterations of on this channel before. While there are a few great use cases for this action, such as captioning photos automatically, I find it's particularly helpful if you download a lot of royalty-free images and get tired of renaming them manually. I'll demonstrate this action in a quick instant cloud flow using a generic royalty-free image I got on Pexels. To get my flow started, I'm clicking Create and laying out a few specifications for my instant cloud flow. I'm giving it a name and then selecting the option to trigger it manually, and lastly, I'm clicking Create to head to the flow diagram page. From here, my first step is to grab my image file, so I'm using the SharePoint get file content action and specifying a few details including my site address and file name. After my file name populates next to the file picker icon, I can move to the Cloudmersive connector action step. I'm now clicking new step and typing Cloudmersive into the connector search bar. From the list of options below, I'm selecting the Cloudmersive image processing connector with the yellow logo. Once I click on that, I jump straight to the action search bar, but if it's your first time using this connector, you'll encounter the usual Power Automate connector login phase. Even though it says premium, you can actually use this connector for free. You just need to register a free account on our website and then copy your free tier API key into the correct field after naming your connection. With that out of the way, we can now search the actions list. From here, I'm typing describe an image and the right connector action comes up immediately. After clicking on it, I only have two simple fields to fill out. The first field is asking for my image file content, so I can easily parse that in using the SharePoint file content option from the dynamic content window. The second field is asking for my file name, which can basically be anything, so I'm just copying and pasting information from the previous step to make it easy. Now that my connector is configured, I'll quickly explain how this works. This connector is going to analyze the image contents and provide two separate descriptions. The first description option is the best outcome, and the second description option is the runner-up outcome. Both descriptions are accompanied by confidence scores ranging from 0 to 1, and the best outcome description will come with a boolean indicating if it's a high confidence score or not. In an ideal scenario, the best outcome should always have a high confidence score, but it's important to remember that this type of operation isn't always perfect, so you'll want to always keep an eye on the confidence score when using these descriptions for your images. I'm now going to run my flow and check the connector action description. First, I'm saving my flow and then clicking test and confirming all my connections. After waiting a few seconds for the flow to finish running, I'm opening the action response body and reviewing the results. The response body first provides a confidence score for what it considers to be the best outcome description, and we can see that description here. As you can see when I quickly show you the photo contents, that's a pretty accurate description and it deservedly gets a high confidence boolean to go along with it. The runner-up description is also accurate, but a little less descriptive. Instead of asserting exactly what the person is doing in this picture, it just indicates that they have an object with them. In this case, either description will work just fine for either captioning or renaming the image. In other cases, you might find lower confidence scores due to confusing image subjects, and in those cases, it's important to refer to the confidence score and see how the connector might have gotten tripped up. For example, from a sidelong view, it might mistake a laptop as a plate of food, and so it might think the person is eating rather than working on their laptop. With our demonstration complete, we've reached the end of this video. If you found this video helpful, please hit the like and subscribe buttons and feel free to check out dozens of additional connector demonstration videos on our channel.